So more examples of chain rule. Remember I showed you the chain rule was if you have a function within a function, we can find the derivative this way, or we can use this trick right here, the derivative of the outside with the original inside times the derivative of the inside. Actually, what I'm maybe going to do is copy this, because I'd like to paste it on the other examples I'm going to show you. So we have this example here. We have 8x squared plus natural log of x squared minus 4x plus 1. I want the derivative. Now this one here is going to be easy. It's this one right here. We have a function here, something of x, within a function. So that's a good example of when we might want to use chain rule. So I'm just going to paste, hopefully, uh, what I just had here, except maybe I should move it all. Oops. Well, that's not very nice. Maybe I'll just say, uh, I'm going to try to undo things here. So there we go. I've copied it, and I'm going to go down here and hopefully maybe paste it down here. Well, that's not very nice. It just wants to put it up here. Well, that's actually really horrible because now I'm going to have to well, move the box, I suppose, and then move the writing. Oh, darn. And actually, it wanted to split it up into different things, so that's not very handy. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong one. Maybe I'll just go like this and say, good enough. So let's actually try to do this. So rather than spending all my time uh, lining everything up, let's do it. Let's solve this. So this one right here, then. If I want to do this, I have to consider, well, first of all, dy dx it's going to be pretty easy. At least this first part here is going to be easy. 8x squared, the derivative of that is, well, the 2 comes in front, so 2 times 8 is 16, times x to the power of 2 minus 1 is just a 1. So there we go. We're done with this one. This one, however, is harder. This right here, I'd say, is the inside. So the inside function is actually going to be you know, this, this whole thing right here. So x squared minus 4x plus 1. The outside function, then, is the natural log. So the derivative of a natural log of something. So it's like we've got ln of some junk. Okay, so the derivative of ln is just 1 over. So that means, because that's actually the derivative of natural log of x, is just 1 over x. That's what the derivative becomes. So I'm going to make it like it was 1 over some sort of junk. So ln of junk is just, well, the derivative of ln of some junk is just 1 over junk. Now, I use the word junk just to keep it generic here. So it's ln of whatever's in here is 1 over this when we do its derivative. So that was the derivative of the outside. I'm done with that. Now, with original inside. Oh, so I have to feed it the original thing that was in there. So x squared minus 4x plus 1. Okay. Then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So times derivative of the inside. So I just deal with this derivative here. So the deriv derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of negative 4x is just minus 4. And the derivative of 1 is, well, it goes poof, it disappears. So there it is. So it's like this thing is multiplied by this. Well, I could just pretty it up a little bit if I want. So I'll still have a 16x. And this one right here, well, since it's multiplying now this times 1, that doesn't do much, so it's just plus 2x minus 4, all that divided by x squared minus 4x plus 1. And it may be a good idea to try to see if this thing here factors, because if it factors, maybe it's a multiple of you know 2x minus 4, and then I could reduce them. But it turns out this one here doesn't factor. I can't find a number whose product is 1, whose sum is negative 4. So that means that I'm done. And this is my slope of my tangent of this graph at any point. That's what this represents here. So if I wanted to say, what's the slope at x equals 2 of this crazy graph? Well, then I would just multiply. Well, I would just replace instead of x, I'd just put in a 2. And away I would go and figure it out. So that's how we can deal with chain rule. I've got one more example here. So we've got this one. And um, again, I'm going to do derivative of the outside with the original inside. So I'm going to do that same whole thing. Oh, crap, it did it again. Oh, well. So I'm going to then just, let me just attempt to drag. No, that's actually not going to work. I've tried that before. Oh, well, I'll just have to drag the box down. I'll have to drag this derivative piece. Whoops, maybe I'll drag this one down first. And then this one, and then this one. Okay. And I'll just have to leave the bracket, the colon here.
So here we go, I have a function within a function. Again, so I'm ready to go. I need to figure out what's outside and inside. Well, this cos x, that's going to be the inside. Now, this is not very calculus friendly right now. I have a square root. So maybe it helps. Before doing y primed, let's still rewrite y. I'm still going to work with the original function. If you remember your uh, rules of exponents, a square root, this is like a little stealth 2 here. It's like a little second root of this. That's the same thing as saying this whole thing to the power of 1 over 2. Ah, now this is more calculus friendly because now I can deal with it. This is like junk to the power of one half. That's the outside function. The inside function is, of course, just cos x. So if I want this, then the y prime is going to be, well, what's the derivative of some junk to the power of one half? Well, the one half would come in front. I'd have that junk to the power of, and I would say, well, one half minus one. Well, one half minus one is the same thing as saying one half minus two halves. I need to get it a common denominator. Two over two is the same as one. So one minus two, that gives me negative one half. So that's why I'm gonna say this becomes negative one half. So now I've just done the derivative of the outside, but I need to do it with the original inside. And the inside is cos x, so cos x. And I'm not done yet, don't forget, you still have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of cosine is just, well, it's really easy, it's just negative sine. So then it just becomes times, you know, negative sine x. Well, that's great. Now I can just rewrite it. So don't forget, a negative exponent is like putting something down at the bottom. So let's just deal with what's on the top. We've got a 1 on the top. This thing is actually on the bottom because it's got a negative exponent. So I'm going to ignore this for a second. So I have a 1, and I have a negative sine x. So that means I only have negative sine x on the top. Divided by, well, I've got a 2 on the bottom, and now I've got a cos x to the power of positive 1 half. That's the same. So cos x to the power of negative 1 half. Remember your rules of exponents. Negative exponents are the same as putting it down on the bottom and making it to a positive power. And if I want to pretty it up just a little bit more, I can. So I'll say it's negative sine x over 2 times. And remember what? something to the power of one half is. Now actually I should have been careful right here, I should have set a bracket here, because if not I might think it's cosine of x to the one half, and it's not, it's cosine x, all that is to the power of one half. And if you remember this, then this means it's a square root. So this is the answer. This is my derivative of this graph at any point. That's this derivative here. This derivative here represents the um, slope of the tangent line of this one at any point. So as long as maybe I was asking for y primed at x equals 0, and then I would put in, well, that would actually be boring, because sine of 0 is just 0. But uh, let's say I set it at, I don't know, uh, pi radians. I could actually say pi here. And it turns out minus sine of pi over 2 times square root of cos pi. That might be more interesting to look at. Although we would also have a problem there too. But you could, you could basically pick whatever value of x you want. And this right here will work for it. So that's great. And let's maybe just do one last one. And I'm going to give you the most horrible one I could think of. So I called it the super gross example. And we're going to do the same idea though still. We're still going to deal with this. So this one looks terrible. It looks absolutely disgusting. So I've got e to the power of 2x squared minus 4. All that's times tangent of 3x. And all that is plus the cube root of x to the 4. Oh my god, gross. This is really terrible. But let's do it anyway. So if we can deal with this, there's probably not much in chain rule that we can't deal with. So I just want to point out something. Now first of all, let's maybe uh, just rewrite this one. I just want to work on this piece right here, because this is going to be the simplest to work on. Well, it turns out this is the same thing as, let's just write it out here. So this one right here, if I just wanted to deal with it, it's over here, my little hipster mustache. Um, if I just made y equals, you know, this thing right here, well, a cube root is the same thing as saying, you know, this x to the 4. Remember, a cube root is the same thing as saying to the power of 1 over 3. So that means then that this little y value right here is x to the power of, well, 4 times 1 over 3, because that's what we do with rules of exponents. 
if we have to, x to the power of 4, all that's to the power of 1 third, we say it's 4 times 1 third. So that's just 4 thirds. And that means then that the derivative of that is going to be, well, 4 thirds comes in front times x to the power of, I need to do 4 thirds minus 1. Now 4 thirds minus 1 is the same thing as saying 4 thirds minus 3 thirds, so that gives me just 1 third. So if I really want to pretty it up again then, I would say this is 4 thirds, and x to the power of 1 over 3, that's the cube root of just x. So I could say that this right here is actually what my um, derivative is of just this first piece here. So I'm just going to sort of deal with that off to the side. So this right here, I just dealt with the original, and then I dealt with the derivative of just this one. So now we're sort of, we're ready for that one. That one's done. But I just want to point out this one. Maybe I'll color code this and do it in a different color. Maybe I'll do this one in green here. So uh, maybe I'll do it in red instead. So this one right here, I'm going to have to use product rule. It turns out I've got this times this. So I've got some sort of u times some sort of v. See, because I've got something that's a function of x multiplied by something else that's a function of x. And I've made it really horrible because I'm a really mean jerk here. What I've done is I've made this one needs chain rule to do it, and this one also needs chain rule to solve it. Well, let's use this. So this right here is going to be product rule, which is going to state that y primed is going to be, well, if we have y equals u times v, Product rule says that it's going to be u v primed plus v u primed. So now I need to basically figure out then what's u, what's v, what's u primed, and what's v primed. Once I know that, I'm going to have my shopping list and I can put everything together. Because this one right here, just to maybe go back to blue here, this one right here is going to be needed. I'm going to need that piece. Because it turns out this right here is going to be the derivative of that. So that's easy. Well, maybe not so easy, but we're done at least. Now what I need to do though is deal with this one here. So change my pen back to red. So I've got u. u is e to the 2x squared minus 4. That looks terrible. And v is tan of 3x. This is going to get way worse. So this one right here, sorry, but uh, this one right here, this is a chain rule. So to do chain rule, I have to consider what's outside and inside. Now this piece right here is going to be the inside e to the junk, that's the outside. And chain rule says to do derivative of the outside, so it's going to be e to the junk, right? That's derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So derivative of e to the junk is just e to the junk. So it's going to be, you know, I still have to keep the original inside. That's what this, uh, well, that's what this um, chain rule here said. Derivative of the outside with the original inside but then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this one right here, whoops, I'm going to need more room, turns out. So I'm going to maybe move these two. I'm going to just move them further over. So I have this one right here. I have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be the derivative of this thing. Derivative of 2x squared is going to be 4, because the 2 and the 2 multiply times x to the power of 1. And then this one goes poof. So maybe just for fun, I should actually just pretty it up a little bit. So I'm going to, um, yeah, I think I'll put in, I'll put in the, uh, I'll put in the 4x first. I think that'll be nicer. So I'll say 4x times e to the 2x squared minus 4. That's my u primed. Although it looks ugly, there it is. And my v prime, well, what's that? Well, derivative of tangent, let's say it was tangent of some junk. The derivative of tangent is 1 over cos squared of that same junk. So instead of that junk, I put in 3x. So now I've done the derivative of the outside with the original inside. Then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 3x is just 3. So that means then my v prime becomes, well, 1 times 3 is just 3 over cos squared of 3x. Now this may look like the ugliest, most horrible thing, but it turns out I'm going to need this, I'm going to need this, and I'm going to need u primed, and I'm going to need v primed. With all of these, I can put them together. So I'm finally ready to do it. 
So maybe I'll now write it in green here. So let's use proper notation. If we want f primed of x, then I'm going to say f primed of x. I'm going to write it properly here. Now, how do I do this? Well, I need to do u times v primed plus v times u primed. That's how I deal with this whole mess here. So it's going to be u, which is e to the 2x squared minus 4. And all that has to be multiplied by v primed, so which is times 3 over cos squared of 3x. All that has to be added to uh, v times u prime. So in this case right here, it's going to be 4x times e to the 2x squared minus 4. All that is times 4 over 3 times a cube root of x. And I need to probably go a little bit further than this. Uh, because what I need to do then is actually say, um, wait a second, hold on, hold on, I made a mistake. I'd better be very, very careful here. So this one right here, uh, this was u times v prime. So this was u, that was here, and v primed was this thing. Then I have to do plus v u prime. I don't know why I use this one. That's y primed. So that's, that's just my little sort of placeholder. That's this one. So I don't know why I used that. That was a little bit silly of me here. So um, what I can do then is I want v times u prime. So v, which is 10 of 3x, and I want to multiply that by this. So I'm going to say plus 4x e to the 2x squared minus 4. I have to multiply that by 10 of 3x. There we go. For a second, I looked wrong there. And then I have to, of course, add that to the derivative of, well, this last thing. Well, we already figured that out. So it's 4 over 3 times a cube root of x. Well, this looks just like the most horrible thing ever. This is really ugly. But I suppose if we wanted to at least pretty it up slightly, we could say the 3 in front here. So I could say equals um, 3 times e to the 2x squared minus 4, all that over cos squared of 3x. Now I'd say plus, well, there's not really much to do here, except maybe put the 10 3x in front, I suppose. So I could say it's 4x times tangent of 3x, all that times e to the 2x squared minus 4, and all that plus, I suppose I could say 4 times a cube root of x, all that over 3, I suppose I could say. This is my final answer. This is the most gross thing ever, but we can still do it. So we can use even the most horrible looking example ever, okay, even this horrible example here. And I was really mean because I gave you something that, well, first of all, looked ugly. This little piece right here was really ugly, but that gave you this when we did the derivative. This one right here used a product rule, and within each product rule, we had to use a chain rule. So this required really complicated things here, plus a product rule, and plus a chain rule twice, because we had to use chain rule to find this derivative, and we had to use chain rule to find that derivative. So this is really, really ugly, super gross example, but you can see that you can still do it. You can still use chain rule to do all sorts of crazy stuff. So hopefully you can see the use in chain rule, not just for gross examples, but for much nicer and more reasonable examples as well. So that's how we can deal with chain rule here. This is more common. This is like what you'll see very often in a high school course, at least, or introductory university course. You'll often be dealing with chain rule things like this.